Hey guys, it's Chad from Mutant from uh, CNR Reviews, and um, we're going to be building a uh, the 1022 Archangel kit today. This is after I have uh, fully converted my 1022 Charger into a full size. We'll go over the cost and some things I don't like and do like. Um, I went ahead and uh, this has actually just got a fresh coat of Dura coat on it. Did combat gray for the color. And I did this part and then I did the, re the receiver top. Uh, I did not do the Picatinny rail on top. But anyways, we're going to get everything put together and we're going to show you guys what it looks like. Um, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll go over some things as we're going along, some things I don't care for. But i got to say, first off, that uh, the Archangel guys, thank you very much. You guys saved me some jail time again. I had put the uh, Charger 10-inch barrel on this. And they had contacted me and said, do you understand that that's a short barrel rifle now? You need to get that uh, re-registered. And fortunately for the cost of re-registering, it's 200 bucks. Um, come to find out, I could have registered it, but in the state of Washington, it's illegal. Um, you're not even allowed to have them at all. So I went out and I just purchased the longer barrel to make it a standard rifle. This is a 16-inch uh, fluted barrel from uh, Green Mountain. Fluted bull barrel. There we go. So let's go ahead. Unfortunately, I gotta dry fire that. Let's go ahead and get this thing assembled. You assemble it just like you're putting in the uh, 1022 into a regular stock. This fits nice and snug in there. And there's that part. We want to take, let me show you something really quick on this. This is the top part of the Ruger, or I mean of the Archangel kit. Now on the very top of the uh, receiver for the Ruger uh, Charger and I believe the, the, the normal 1022, there's little tiny screw holes for flatheads where you can attach a rail on top. And these rails do do something, um, or, or I'm sorry, not the rail, but the holes do connect down inside of the receiver. So you, you want to make sure you plug up those holes. Now on the Archangel kit itself, they have those holes too. They make it hard as hell to actually get the screw in there. You gotta have a really tiny screw screwdriver to be able to, to plug those holes. And they do supply you with longer screws. I didn't really see a point. It's already hard enough to get off this kit when you get it on there uh, to clean the gun. I didn't really see a point in screwing down this into the top either. So what I ended up doing was I actually just took a knife and just bored out these holes so I could leave my screws in my receiver and just put this over the top. And uh, that actually seems like it works really, really well. Um, let's go ahead and put, uh, we'll toss the front end on real quick. There we go. We'll throw the top on. As you can see, it's pretty easy. What we'll do is we'll do a couple screws. There's two screw holes that you need to get. One here and one here to attach these. Is this thing sliding around? Let's go ahead and get this screwed in the top one here. Well, like I said, to take this apart it's kind of a pain in the ass. So. I don't plan on cleaning this really thoroughly where I'm removing the bolt and everything, but maybe every 500 to 1,000 rounds. What I'll end up doing is I'll just basically just try to clean as much as I can from underneath the magwell area and pulling back and forth on the bolt. So we'll get this done right here. There's the two screws on top. And I'll go ahead and point out one other issue that I had, a complaint. On this kit, this magwell area fits so tight that I am unable to use my factory 10 round mag. The factory 10 round, 10 round mag fits so snugly in there, I have to get a, um, I gotta grab something, something to actually get, you know, either a screwdriver or a, or a pair of pliers or something to actually get that thing to, to actually go in. It is a pain in the ass. So just be aware of that. 
this screw is not totally tight enough, it's not sucking it down enough. Alright, let's go ahead see if we can get these other two. There's two uh, screw holes here or here that we want to get into. You can use a screwdriver for most of the way. So we're going to get those screwed in. an odd angle to be using a screwdriver at. Fucking mat. But anyways, that's that's really my only two complaints on this thing. Uh, I do have a third complaint, but I'm sure anybody who has an AR type style stock is gonna go, you're an idiot, you don't know what you're talking about, whatever. It's no big deal. Um, my third complaint is that with the stock fully out and if I put a scope on top of this rail the scope is so low I can't see it uh, I have to like cock my head funny so I ended up having to go out and purchase a uh, um, a riser mount it's about an inch and a half tall almost two inches tall to throw my scope on there so I'd not have to cock my head funny and that way other people can use it let's go ahead and this screw is almost in Throw on that riser mount and I'll show you what else type of accessories I'm putting on here. They're nice and tight. And so far that's how it looks. It's kind of BA. I like it. So this is a Simmons 22 mag and, and just regular scope. Um, it's a 3 to 9 by 32. I'm going to get this on there. What's cool about having this top on is I don't have to dick around with removing my I don't have to keep dicking around when I have to take this apart with removing my scope directly from the top rail. I can just unscrew these. It comes right off. And not only that, for eye relief purposes, I can move it forward or backward. So there's the scope on there. And like I said, it's just got the, the easy finger nubs on there. Now on the base here, I went out. Now the, the charger comes with a bipod. I found at the range it's really nice to have it on there. It makes it nice and simple. So I went out and I purchased the little this I believe it's from Weaver or something. Oops. I believe it's from Weaver. It's a bipod attachment. It makes it nice and simple to do. Go ahead and attach the bipod. This can be uh, this can sometimes be a pain in the ass to do, but it needs to be loosened. So guys, I'm just gonna throw this out there too. I don't want to piss anybody off, but I found out that Promag makes the Archangel kits. And I'm going to just say that I've never had any luck with Pro Mag mags. Every time I buy a Pro Mag mag, it sucks. I end up shooting it at the range because I get so pissed off because it won't feed or whatever. And I really don't want to dick around with their warranty center. So there we go. That's the little... I'm picking up two of these BX25 banana clips for this specific reason. You can see they fit really snug in there. And that's the finished product, guys. Now, I do have a UTG little mini a pistol grip that I could put down here if I wanted to. Um, actually, we'll just throw that on there. I may not run a gun with that when I'm messing around. But we'll go ahead and talk real quick. I'll just tell you what I have again on this. This is a Green Mountain fluted um, bull barrel 16-inch Simmons 22 mag scope, a, a Weaver top mount riser. It's about an inch and a half to two inches tall. This is a, I believe it's a Harris bipod 
but it might be an aftermarket. Doesn't have any uh, doesn't have any marks that say exactly who makes it. Uh, UTG grip, a BX25 Ruger factory mag, and the Archangel kit. And last of all, a Ruger 1022 charger um, internal. And like I said, it seems to uh, all fit together. This is a uh, full custom um, 1022. Now the receiver area, like I said, has been Duracoated and you get that combat grain. So there you go, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, and uh, you're going to see us messing around with this at the range. And I'll let you know a review on the barrel. I'll tell you what I think of it and what I don't think of it. And... Um, if I would buy another one or not and there you go thanks for watching and have a good day